for more on GE's earnings, we are joined right now by Stephen Haight. He is the senior research analyst from Key Private Bank in Cleveland. KeyBank's parent company owns 17 million GE shares. Steve, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We Thank just you. heard some of the figures there from Scarlett, some of the details in this earnings release. But we know overall a beat on the top line, a beat on the bottom line. Does this mean you're going to buy more GE shares? Well, you know, I think that the, the company came in and, uh, and exceeded expectations. It's definitely a solid quarter. You know, global industrial production continues to, uh, continues to be solid, and the firm looks like it's providing decent leverage to that at this time. I think the orders going forward really look pretty decent out of this so report. So the orders for equipment, you mean, as Scarlett referenced, up 20%, and as she noted as well, services up 5%. You feel like that's better than expected, or at least on track with what yeah. you want? Yes, it's definitely at least on track with expectations if not slightly ahead and uh, you know, I think that the company sees its order book translate there on the equipment side into uh, revenue and then earnings two to three quarters down the road so maybe that provides us with a little bit of a reason to move estimates higher for 2011. So if equipment and services look good Steve one line that we noticed my colleague Eric Shasker pointed out NBC Universal revenue up at 12 percent did GE sell this business at the wrong time did they get out too soon? No, I don't really believe that they got out too soon. The bottom line was that NBC Universal was always a non-core business for GE, and I think that exiting it over the, the intermediate term has been the right strategy for management to take. Non-core divestitures need to be an ongoing theme for management as they move forward. One other thing that we noticed coming across on the subject of NBC Universal is that you know the sale to Comcast obviously closed later than GE wanted, and it's going to cost the company this year. It's just going to they're going have to pay more in taxes. To what extent are you concerned about that as far as your position goes? Well, the tax rate is always an issue with GE. They have so many puts and takes on a quarterly basis. You know, the bottom line is it's a quality of earnings issue. You know, I, I don't really think that it's going to impact the, the overall view that investors have, which is going to really key off of the leverage that it has to the uh, industrial economy and the leverage that the company is able to generate on the comeback of its financial services operations. Now, we know this is the third straight quarter uh, of growth. I mean, many people crediting Jeff Immelt. You made the point, too, getting away from all non-core businesses seems to be operating pretty well in many, many of their businesses. What about this possibility that perhaps Immelt will be distracted? We know that Volk is out in D.C. Immelt is in the self-described Republican sort of part of this newly named President's Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. Can Immelt spend enough time in Washington, D.C. for the President's taste and still run the company? Well, one of the things that is always a positive about GE is that they have a tremendous amount of depth in the management team. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, the political connections that the team at the senior level has in Washington has helped them on the export side of their business. And uh, as, as uh, Jeff Immelt uh, makes a commitment there to, uh, to help at the highest level, I think it will benefit the firm at the bottom line over time. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Steve Haight joining us there from Key Private Bank. He is in Cleveland, Ohio, and the parent bank owns 17 million shares of GE.